All right, let's get her going on the real Kipper and Bourne show. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, Derek Brandale, Frank the Tank, Raska Ooh, is in. Must be a special. Show. We know it's playoff time when we're bringing in Frank the Tank. Seriously, bringing in the heavy guns here. Literally. Wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening on Sportsnet 590, Sportsnet 360, and Sportsnet Plus, we're glad you're aboard. And when you can't catch us live, please download us wherever you get your pod in Texas at 590-590. Sammy will read them out. And have we got a jam-packed show for you. I can't wait to see what we're going to talk about. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> As the Toronto Maple Leafs end their 82-game regular season Losing 6-4 to the Tampa Bay Lightning to finish the 2023-24 regular season. And so much we can get into as we gear towards Saturday night's puck drop. Game one, Toronto Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins. But before that, we, we got to put a bow on this whole Austin Matthews, 70 goals. And, and how disappointed Sammy is today or Leaf Nation I haven't got a clue how we're going to put a bow on this, but we're going to attempt it. Well, I guess it's time. So he didn't hit the number. His parents were there. His poor mom was, you know. Swearing. Swearing. A couple of S-bombs in there. I felt for them. Matthews had seven shots in the first period, a feat which he's only accomplished three times in his whole career. So he was pushing for it. It didn't happen. Um, I guess. Does it change how you feel about the decision to play the games down the stretch? Well, I am, I, I think I, I kind of made it clear to you guys about a month ago that I, you don't want it to end up being a distraction, like a major, <laughs> major yeah. kind of everybody, it, it it played out the way I thought it was going to play out. I, I hoped yeah. it wouldn't have. Yeah. And I had, I, I really had some strong, optimistic thoughts that, he could reach 70 without it looking like it did the last couple of games. Yeah. And it didn't happen. No. Yeah, it became a sideshow, Kip. There's no doubt it became some it became the theme to the point where it was like, who cares about what the right play is? We're looking for Austin at a time when, you know, the team is trying to dial in the last decimal points of perfection to try to get ready for playoffs. It was not what we wanted to see. I know Sammy had a tough time with last night. Yeah. I, I, I want to be clear because I know when we're coming into playoff season, we're coming into passion season here. We're coming into the time of year where you really get worked up about stuff. Yeah. So I really don't want to waste, like to use a coach here, I don't want to waste one of my bullets on a meaningless game 82. Okay. I don't want to be, have these thoughts held against me heading into the playoffs, <laughs> but God, did I hate that game last night. I hated everything about that game last night. I thought the third period, good thing they were close to Disneyland because that was Mickey Mouse, boys. <laughs> that was horrific. Hated it. Hated are, are it. We, are we just talking stuff. alone about trying to get this guy 70 goals? Is that all you speak of right now? Yeah, partly, but, you know, I think – the Lightning were acutely aware of the what was going on with their superstar, mm -hmm. and I thought they played really well for half the game. They clearly went to absolute sleep in the second half of the game, like everybody did. The Leafs ended up scoring four, but they played hard. They got their superstar his his thing. Leafs didn't happen. Clearly, Matthews had a ton of chances. I'm not putting that on them. I just I thought the way the whole thing felt to me, it didn't feel like hockey. Okay, they went into this game and there was one point of a hockey game. And it was getting this guy 70 goals. Their power play stunk for three weeks because they just kept feeding him the puck. Everyone was passing it to him. People are getting mad at John Tavares because he shot the puck at the net in a hockey game. Like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Like, you know, oh, he drove, did, he drove did, the did net. You, did you, someone told me that you guys did Leaf Talk last night. Yes. And did, did you call Tavares selfish? No, that was Bunk. That was J.D. Bunk. Yeah, that was J.D. Bunk. But he said, but he was very similar that he said that we can't, these thoughts cannot be held against us going forward. It was just coming yeah, out that I, game. I just find it so ironic that someone would call John Tavares selfish. For scoring a goal? 
for not passing to a guy who is kind of looking selfish. I thought it was the whole thing was horrible. I, and, I, I and honestly not, couldn't hate it That's not a knock. That's not a knock on Matthews trying to get his 70th. I'm just saying that, like, it's it's selfish to think that a guy that's being paid $11 million cannot do what he's supposed to do, mm-hmm. and that's shoot it in the net. Right. The, actually, the funny version of this and another comment that Bunk made, which I really liked last night, is about how TJ Brody hadn't scored. He had the longest goal. Of 111 Schroeder. games. Yeah, of any NHLer who'd played that long. 111 games, scores a goal, and he has to go give a press conference like he had been caught in a scandal <laughs> to be like, I uh, shouldn't have shot that one in the net. I Listen, wish it was an assist. I, I, I've been around the game a long time. Yeah. E- even after Tavares scored the goal, mm-hmm. to watch everybody's reaction like, oh. and how... Well, Brody's goal killed the power play, and everyone was like, oh. A second later, like, Tavares felt awful. No one acknowledged him. He just put his head down and went to the bench. Matthews didn't pat him on the... Nor should they have acknowledged him. Matthews didn't, you know, pat him on the shin pads. It's like, it was the worst-looking goal celebration I've ever seen in the history of the game. Yeah. There was nothing. It was... Everybody felt bad. Yeah. It was so goofy. I know. People were like, how could he drive the net on a power play? Yeah. Oh, God forbid he... It is is very funny, though, that the whole team was like, we're going to feed Matthews, and Tavares is like, I'm going to stuff this. Yeah. Like, I know it's it's not... It's a hockey game. Well, it wasn't. That's the point that you're making. (sighs) It wasn't a hockey game. It was a sideshow to get this guy the thing. They didn't get him. The one guy wasn't even a part of the thing to get the guy the thing. And the whole thing. And then, if you zoom out from it all, no one cared. No one cared about that game. So who cares anyway, right? The Tampa dress 17 in their third string. Leafs dressed a guy they haven't played in two months. And the whole thing was just a farce. And that's why I'm not using one of my bullets. You used one. Ah! It's it's already gone. It's already gone. (laughs) So, So... Five or ten years from now, from 20 years from now, yeah. when we talk about Austin Matthews scoring 69, are we going to remember, like, the 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 last couple of games here? And oh, I sure, is the first thing that we're yeah. going to remember is how bizarre it was to try to get to 70. I, I think it stays for a very long time. Ah, uh, you want it to stay. No, no, I don't want it In to that, stay. No, I, I but think if, it's when a... I when I when I see that 69, yeah. I'm going to think about... Like, how bizarre it was to try to get him 70. Well, I think a lot of people disagree with you there. A lot of hockey fans loved this season, the chase, you know, hitting 69. I hope so. Yeah. I, I hope I, I hope it's, it's not. It's a spectacular season. And I've made this case to 100 people, not everyone who will listen. But, like, if your team scores 320 goals and you have 69 or 70, you still contributed this much of the pie. You know, maybe it's this much, this much, this much, See, you know. I think it's, I think it's, it's still out there. And it's to be concluded because you, you cannot just cut off a line here going into the Boston series. Mm-hmm. There is what kind of effect did the last few games have going into Boston? Yeah. If if the Leafs were to your page. if the if the Leafs were to lose in five games and Austin scores one in five, do you think people will be dragging in the last week and a half well, into, into the series? Good. Is that a possibility? Very much so. Of course it is. That's what That was always what was at stake with the decision to play these final few games. And I wrote about this where I said, I think he should not play because even if he, you know, I just think the perception of what his priorities are, what the team's priorities are, would be better. And you could feel good going into the playoffs that you made the team thing a priority I was vastly overruled by every single person I talked to. Everyone wanted him to pursue 70, even longtime hockey guys. So I get it. I get why he they did it for him. But now, yes, now that's what's on stake. Another thing for this core of pursuing a self thing yeah. instead of prioritizing a team thing. They, they get through Boston, and, and no one's going to remember no one the last two games. And there's a very good chance he's excellent, you know? And, and even if they lose to Boston and he has, whatever, five goals in seven games, an awesome series. You know, I, I think he's not going to catch heat, but how he plays is going to matter. If he has a quiet game seven, he's going to catch some heat. Yeah, yeah, of course. All that is context for sure. Hold on, didn't you guys do a panel and you predicted something when you guys predicted that he was going to score sixty nine on yeah, the dot? That was me. That was you, Kipper. Yeah, that was me. I, I actually think <laughs> I said sixty eight. Oh, yeah, I, I had him at sixty nine. <laughs> but listen, seventy's hard. 
There's a reason no one does it. And when he pulled that one back into the middle from his knees and he has a clean look on a guy who hasn't played in yeah. I don't know how long and he almost splits the puck in two in the bar, that to me will go down as like, I will remember that more than I'll remember a lot of the games. But God, it's just... From the hash marks on a third string goalie. Beat you know, him in his sweet so spot, best clean. shooter in the league. Crossbar. Okay, let's go to our first Kipper's Clipper of the day on... Sheldon Keefe and, and, and the words that uh, he might have uttered to Austin knowing that he fell one short of 70. Well, I was just acknowledging how it was 34 seconds left in the game, which was pretty fitting for the type of season that he's had. Um, for it to regular season to come to an end uh, like that. Um, he's just played, he's played so tremendously well I know obviously there's been a lot of focus on the pursuit of 70 goals but in that you kind of lose sight of just how well he's played you know um, he's playing playing well feeling well uh, and it's been fun to watch you know he's the way he's played these played these last two games I mean you give him the, those men those types of chances and those types of shots and he might have got 75 um, but, uh, you know, not meant to be, and that's, uh, that's okay. 69 is an unbelievable season. And, uh, yeah, 34 seconds on the clock tells me there's more, sorry, more, more great things to come for Austin and our team. Okay, but that's when, he pulled, that's when they, the play stopped and he pulled him off the ice. Mm -hmm. 34 seconds after the yeah. game. Maybe that's a sign. Yeah. You think so? Oh, yeah, great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and for the record, too, like, yes, Tampa Bay had a milestone with 100 assists for Kucherov, and Austin's going for 70. It's a hell of a lot easier to look like a a team yeah. when you're trying to get someone an assist. Yeah, he's been trying to, to get the puck. You get to pass it. Once he passes the puck, it gives your team a ton of options yeah. moving forward. Those options weren't there. It was get the puck to Austin, and then Austin has to shoot it. Yeah. It it, it sets up for a much more selfish-looking night. For sure. Sure. And it's a hard That's scenario. No, when I, just like, wanted, I just wanted you're right. to, make, to, to note that. Plenty of teams, you know, when you have a great offensive weapon in any sport, and it's the only weapon your team has, and you know the one thing they're trying to do, it gets awfully hard to make it happen. So, you know, and I'm not too fixated on him falling a goal short of 70. I am fixated on... The way the team looked, the priorities they showed, the last four games, all of which they lost, the amount of goals that are going in. 22 in the last four. 22 in the last four. Like special team stuff. Like, there's... It's... I'm very much in favor of just throw it out the window. But it's a lot of hockey games to throw out the window at the, at the end of the year. Too many. Yeah. Listen, I, I'm not thrilled about the last four games and the sideshow that went along with it. Uh, but I do believe that there's enough uh, experience now through that lineup mm -hmm. led by Austin and, and Mitch to, to come in and reset. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I'll go back to what I've always said pretty much the whole season. I, I they're, they're never as good as, as they look sometimes, but they're never as bad. No. And they have a way of coming back off of tough games and, and resetting. So that's that's my hope as a as a guy that follows the Leafs on a daily basis that we're gonna have we're we're still gonna set up get set up here for a hell of a series. Buddy, it's gonna be close. Let's listen to Keith clip three on the details lacking. I couldn't tell you the score of any of those games. Including the one we just finished. But what about the some of the details that you know you you've been talking about? They weren't there all the time. Yeah, they're not. They're not there all the time. They're, they're not. They're not going to be. I mean, it's, it's human nature. Okay. I, so I love him trying to you know like yeah. replay us positivity. And Luke, just right in there. Yeah. But what about the details you talked about, buddy? Yeah. That was great. Yeah. The one. <laughs> Who cares? The it's one detail said. is. I think uh, a few individual efforts, and I think Willie Nylander's play stood out last night as a guy that, I don't know, is just looking ahead already. I think Sheldon made a comment uh, 
We had, we had that post game on on Willie Nylander. Let's have a listen. Well, I think the last, uh, like his numbers have been down the last little bit, but his game hadn't been. I mean, he's just last week. He to me, he was dominating play. You know, um, and just puck wasn't going in for him, sort of like it was with Austin. You know, here the last couple of days. You know, I would, I think in the last week, uh, you know, Willie's sort of shown that he's done with regular season hockey and he's ready to move along. But um, I'm not concerned about Willie. I think that's a funny comment that Willie's shown he's done with regular season hockey. I didn't like it at all. Did you like the comment no. or the play? The the comment. Why don't you like what the comment? Uh, that it's taking him off the hook a little bit. Mm-hmm. That I don't like. Yeah. That uh, and our good pal here, Sammy McKee, went out oh. of his way last <laughs> night to uh, to isolate it on his ex. Uh, Sammy went hyper viral. Yeah, yes. was, uh, I think a million right? people looked at that tweet now. So, ah, oopsie. <laughs> and yeah, it, it's a bad look. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Any way you You're talking slice about Nylander, it, not touching the puck. Yeah, not only touching the puck, but 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 essentially quitting on the fact that he wasn't going to touch the puck. But quitting on a line change yeah, as like well. Yeah, you're not going to touch it. And you're going to let them play. Get off the rink so someone else can play. Yes, yeah. and I don't know who came on. Maybe Mitch Marner came I mean, on. It could have been McDavid. And no, he sewered his teammate yeah. for a minus. Yeah. And I, I don't care if it's game one or game 82. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're playing the Florida Panthers and the Tampa Bay Lightning... And they have guys in their lineup that are acting like pros and playing hard. How do you not do the same? I mean, this is this is Willie, right? And I'm not taking him off the hook and saying he's he gets different rules. You're allowed, you can hold them accountable all you want, but like this is or years and years and years into a career of this is he does this. He has games and moments. And, and it's accepted. Well, accepted by who? Like, Sheldon. Well, I, I see. I think with the regular season. when you get to this point on the calendar, it's not the time to blast your guys. It's the time to build guys up and get guys feeling good. And we're going into playoffs. And I'm sure he, you know, behind the scenes going, hey, Willie, like, can you give me better on that? But and what was that? Doesn't serve him well to come out and kill the guy. I don't know. I, I don't know if you kill the guy. Just don't play him. Just, you know, if you don't feel like playing. In game 82 last yeah. Time? yeah. Well, yeah. if you're done with regular yeah. season hockey. I'm done watching you play regular yeah, season fair. hockey. Whatever. You think you think a benching would shut him down for the playoffs? No. But Anyways, this is the, this is I, the I just whole did, theme I, I of just last night is that I don't like care the and they didn't care and it doesn't seem to matter. Yeah, but it mattered. It previous... mattered to others, though. You know, it mattered to Florida. It looked like it mattered to Florida. It looked like it mattered to Tampa. That's all. For the first half of the game. And then it w- yeah. really went into no hitter. Yeah, Tampa had 17 skaters in the yeah. third goalie. I mean, they, they got the guys points and. Um, okay where do you want to go from here well i think worthwhile like? to discuss what is going to come of this do you want to hear matthews and falling short of 70 or yeah. we moved on no yeah play it okay play let's it. let's put the bow on matthews yeah. here him on falling you know, i wanted it for sure but you know it uh it just wasn't meant to be and you know for myself as you know we look forward um you know you turn the page and the most important thing is, is the team and the team success and making sure that um, I'm pulling my weight and, and doing what I can as a leader on this team and, um, you know, individually to, to help the team win and especially as we go into the postseason. So that's where my focus is at and I think that's kind of where my mindset's been at all year, um, you know, as far as getting prepared for for uh, for the spring here. So, um, you know, it would have been nice, but, you know, it wasn't meant to be and you know, I'm looking forward to the, uh, you know, getting started here on Saturday. I wanted it. For sure. We knew that. But the rest of it, he could have had a team of speechwriters, couldn't have written a better statement about how the it, priority is the team, focus is getting ready for being good in spring. Like, that's you know, what else do you want to hear yeah, from him? You know? No. He's pro. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good from him. Okay. Good chat, so, boys. I feel a little better. All right. I needed that. What we need to talk about is the goaltending, I mm. think. Because, you know, not great. I would have started Joseph Wool last night who, uh, you know, went to Florida, had a bit of a tough night. Eh, you know, numbers not terrible, but gave up four. I thought they had the opportunity to say he hasn't played much. He's not going to start. He can do it back-to-back. He's 25 years old. Goalies don't blow up if they play back-to-back. What, what did you think of Jones going last night? Uh, if you're not, if, if you're believing in the back-to-back and the analytics and maybe there's some issues still with his lingering 
ankle that you might be concerned for. I, I didn't have a problem with Jones starting. I thought that Sheldon knows his team quite well, and I would much rather see Martin Jones behind that effort than Joseph Wall, who's a guy that might actually face into your, yeah. your playoff plans. That's I, fair. I don't think you I would be like, planning to see that effort. I'd like a 30-for-30 30 30 on those games that Martin Jones played in the least one in. What, why? Because he, he was really good for like yeah, two weeks. he was. And how did that happen? I don't but know. Those either. typical guys <laughs> are two, three weeks great. Yeah. Right? Martin Jones, James Reimers. Like there's a there's a select few out there that can be... Get you that, through that a can, patch. That can get you through a patch and good on him for, for doing that. But... They, they'll they'll never be true number one starters. No. So I think I think Jones is he he did everything that was asked of him this yeah, year. Yeah, absolutely for sure he did. Uh, I would like to see Wool go as I said. Um, the Samsonov thing he's going to be a week between starts, yep. which you know I think they like that for him. They like they like him to have some time with all. Just seems when he gets a Sanford. reset and. Uh, Gives him a chance to get refocused here. Yeah. I, I, I think he's he's so key here. How quick do you think they would go to wool, depending on poor performance? Has he got any sort of leash? Yeah, yeah. well, I, I don't think it would. Again, what, what are we talking about? A guy getting pulled in game one? Are we sure. talking about uh, four on 20 shots? Uh, That's exactly what five, I'm Five, two loss? I think... Uh, I think that it would be discussed. I'd probably think that they'd give him one more try mm-hmm. and and hope he can regroup. It just seems like they kind of got it. They they really stacked all their their chips on Samsonov right now coming in. Sure do. So I don't, I'm not even sure a, a blowout in game one on Samsonov would be enough to, to pull I, him. I think it's reasonable to say, hey, you'll get another crack at this. We've made you the guy. We're not just going to yeah. turn around and make it that tight. He, he hasn't played against the Bruins much. He's only played yeah. in seven games in his career against the Bruins. And this year, would he have played in two or one of he, the games? Maybe? He's got an 8-9-9 save percentage and a two seven seven goals against in seven, his regular in seven games. So it's like that's not a ton to go off of. But yeah. the thing I think of when I guess is Bruins versus Samsonov is that Marshawn penalty shot where – Broken. He, didn't he like twist his ankle with the with that backhand move? But yeah, that's you don't have a ton of ton to go off with Samson versus the Bruins. Yeah. So given the last little bit, do you feel any different about Leafs lineup going in? Have you changed your mind on Lilligren Brody or you know stacking up all your four core four on two or three lines? Where do you sit in the yeah. lineup after watching these past few games? Uh I, I want Austin to feel good, and I don't know where he is off of these last two starts. Mm. So, I if it's me, I'm I'm starting Marner and, and Matthews together mm-hmm. in game one, and then um, Tavares with Willie again. Tavares with with Willie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm on the other side of that. I still like the three. Yeah, I spread just, out. I have to say watching Marner and Matthews and I know these games that they played in like they're meaningless and they we know all know what the plan was trying to get Matthews at 70 passed it to him all the time it just didn't feel great and invoke great feelings watching those two to play together as a fan I I just think that there's a lot of there's a lot of scars with Leaf fans watching those two guys play together and in a lot of big games it goes down when they're playing together and they don't get it done in the big spots I really do think that those guys being separate could be the best for both of them in a well, playoff series. Just in ter- just in terms of how it feels and how it looks and having them on separate lines. If if Sheldon is true to his words a couple of days ago, we'll probably see then Domi, Matthews, and Bertuzzi to start, mm-hmm. and, and and then you we have quick he'll revert. You have uh, Marner with with uh, Tavares. Yeah, I am. You know, like if Yarn Croc's ready to go game one, what has he played? One game in the past? Like you got to get him in. You got to get him going. But yeah. as much as I like him to play with, say, Mitch and Tavares, I don't know if, you like, can you start Yarn Croc in the fourth line and kind of work? Third line. Third, third line? line? Yeah. And uh, so, like, McMahon maybe not quite ready either. Do you think McMahon will play? Have you got any updates for us? I don't. No. I don't. Um, I'd be surprised if he's, if he's ready if he's Saturday. Ready. So... I thought the fourth line looked really good. Last night, uh, Reeves, Camp, and Dewar 
took it to yeah. Braden Point line at times. Reeves <laughs> scores a goal. It's- I mean, we do have to just acknowledge the very, very high comedy of Ryan Reeves and TJ Brody both scoring in a hockey game that Matt Austin Matthews <laughs> needed one to get 70 and didn't get. Yeah. Like, that is very funny. Opened up at the top for a one T, blows <laughs> it through. Yeah. No, but their line was really good. I really like the uh, the energy, the four checking, and all that. And I I get Nick Robertson. Nick Robertson will start based on the injuries, especially if if McMahon's out. Think so? Think he'll get in? Yeah. What What are the options? So right now with fifteen, if we don't forwards, know if Yarn Croc. We're not sure on Yarn Croc. Yeah. So they have fifteen forwards. So yeah. You need three out. Yeah. Gregor's out. Gregor's out. Yeah. You know, if you got injury to McMahon, there's one. And then you just need one more. And so that could be, is Domi back? Is Yarncroc back? And if not, I think Reeves is in. Yeah. I think Robertson might come out there. Mm. Listen, I give Robertson a ton of credit here. Yeah. He, he, he's also giving you everything he has. The butt is he's light. He is. The butt, the butt is, is if he's not getting. <laughs> not, not a Jagger butt. Jagger butt. If he's not shooting it in the net. He can get bounced around a little bit here. And I, I think Reeves, especially the way he's played the last little while, can give you can can make people look over their shoulders and get rid of pucks a lot faster. I feel like the one guy that's gone kind of undiscussed in all these conversations is like Matthew Nyes is just kind of lost, right? Like is he he's not on that fourth line with Dewar and Camp and Reeves, so I guess he's a third line guy. Um but, you know, they don't use him in offensive spots. They don't use him in defensive spots. He's just kind of, do your job. If you get an opportunity, put it in. Um, but I don't think it's out of the question that he could come out at some point. Uh, I don't see it. I don't see it, and I don't want I, it. I, don't I just see think it. he's a part he's, of the conversation. He's, he's a big body. Yeah. Been throwing and his he, weight around the he, whole year. He can. Yeah. He, and he, he can finish anything. He, lead, he leads the team in hits, if Is I'm not right? mistaken. Leads forwards in hits. He yes. Does. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. That's a big deal. He's you it. just cannot... He is a type of guy that can contribute if he's not scoring just based on, again, being a heavy body, leaning on guys. And it's just, it's a better look for the Leafs mm-hmm. when he's in there. Yep. So that, that to me is not an option. Holmberg, again, these are the type of guys that are going to have to come up large. I know it was a meaningless goal last night, but it's a good goal. Well, and you know what else? He had an opportunity earlier in the game where I think he tried to pass it off the pads from dead in the slot, and I was like, oh, no. But he tucked one at the end of the game, maybe get get feeling good about things. So, uh, yeah, he's a no-brainer. He's going to be in the lineup. Do we want to get into facing Boston at all? Well, I, I mean, I read your article today in the Toronto Star, and I thought it was fascinating. So I thought maybe a bigger picture conversation. Okay. But maybe we can hit a break and come back and talk about that. All right, all right. Do you uh, want to tease your uh, well, yes, tease the I combo? just wrote in the article today that uh, for me anyways, uh, it does feel like there's the, the stakes have gotten a lot higher uh, for the organization. Uh, Brendan Shanahan's in for 10 seasons now. This is his 10th season. And uh, with Keith Pelly now watching, what does that mean moving forward? What would a What would a short stint in the playoffs mean to the Leafs and the domino effect that can follow. That's basically the, the gist of my article today in the Toronto Star. And uh, we'll pick up on that when we return. Love it. Oh, after these good. words. Real Kipper and Born. After these words. Welcome back to the Real Kipper and Born show. It's Nick Kiprios, Justin Born, and Sammy. Just Sammy. Oh, there Sammy, you got, Sammy's you, much better off than I thought he was. Like, are you, are you going to, like... Are you disc jockeying tonight? I know. It's Are you mixing head. records? Uh, what is going on headphones. with the headset? I forgot my I forgot my nice headphones at home. And I realized it <laughs> right as I sat down. I looked around. I'm like, well, going with the big Dumbo headphones. <laughs> and That's I'm wearing glasses. Right. Look, I look like look a real great. dork today. You look great. That's all right. But, uh, um, just before the break, we we're just talking about uh, big picture stuff here and and what how you guys feel about this playoff round in particular and and for me i just feel like there's so much more at stake here moving forward yeah and just where are we with the patience of leaf nation and the expectations of of what going into this yeah. first round how for you like what, what are your initial thoughts on the pressure yeah. on these guys and the pressure on brendan shanahan or 
Sheldon Keefe or where Brad Tree Living fits into this because he's this is his first crack. You know, I think when the Leafs lost to Columbus and Montreal, many people were, all right, trade a piece of the core. You need to trade. You're loaded up front. You need some defensemen. Make a trade. Break up the core. And then many playoffs have happened since, and Mm. more people have migrated to that camp, and it's never happened. This past year was all or nothing, right? Not this season. The one before was all or nothing, and it ended up being not all. (laughs) And they still didn't trade anyone. I feel like this is it. I know I sound like, well, it didn't happen last time. Okay, well, it's going to eventually. I feel like if they don't get out of the first round, you're going to lose pieces. You're going to lose maybe a coach. Shanahan may be on the block. You'll lose a piece of the core. Like, it's going, you can't just be like, but next year. You can't do it anymore. Today I wrote that Keith Pelly's the type of guy that isn't scared to make bold decisions here. Um, You know, Sammy, would would you expect big changes if they don't get out of the first round? I think so. I, I, I mean, I've been surprised before here, boys. I thought they should have been, everyone should have been gone after Montreal. And that was like you said, whatever, three years ago, four years ago now. So I've always kind of been in that camp. I, you know, I'd be really surprised if they went out in the first round, if there wasn't some pretty major changes. But I do think, I think the big worry for, you know, MLSE and everybody involved with the Leafs would be coming back next year and I already felt like there's a bit of an apathy towards the Leafs in the regular season and a lot of people looking towards towards the the playoffs and even into the playoffs. Like, I'm not sensing a ton of positivity about this matchup amongst a lot of my buddies. I just, I think you run the risk, if you run this back again and just keep running it back and having the same results, of people checking out. On like, the regular season. On the regular season and just having yeah. your regular season. Listen, I felt it on this show with you two. You know, there's times you're like, yeah, they're going to make playoffs. Let's just get there, you know? Yeah. One of the things that I wrote today was that uh, despite how you feel about rolling anything back, the one thing that may be the most major contributor to changes, if in fact it's a short stint for the Leafs, is Mitch Marner's situation where he's eligible to sign a new contract as early as July 1st. Mm -hmm. And he's unrestricted at the end of next year. His contract alone may dictate that he won't he won't be around much longer if if you've proven that the core four in your forwards doesn't work yeah. and somebody's got to go well it's not going to be Austin it's not going to be the guy that you just signed to 92 million it's going to be Mitch Marner mm. what is his what is their ability to even trade him though do they it's a no move yeah which to me is irrelevant in this yeah. because his focus is to get a new contract. He will sign a, a, a max contract, whether it's seven years as an unrestricted free agent mm-hmm. or eight with the Leafs to keep him yep. or to trade him. Yeah. Right? A sign and trade. Yeah. He's going to want more than he's making now at 10.9. I cannot see him being paid less than Willie Nylander which would put him in the vicinity of 12 times eight. Uh, he, he would be looking for a $100 million contract. So he's got a no move. Yeah. He can certainly exercise it right to UFA, but that serves him no purpose. Mm-hmm. He would, if the Leafs, if he's getting indication from the Leafs that they don't have any plans on signing him for eight, eight, eight years, then he's going to want to dictate... Mm-hmm. where he goes yeah. and you start the process a year out. Yeah. Listen, I, I think at that point in the scenario you're outlining, it probably would be mutual, you know, where fans would say, we just, we have to move someone, you know, and, and to your point, who you, like they would love for it to be Tavares, no disrespect to the guy, but they would prefer it to be Tavares than Mitch, <laughs> but you can't, Yes, you can't. So, you know, maybe they have that conversation first. You know, see if that would be... But, yeah, I definitely think you would get to a point where you'd say, we just need to do this differently. Yeah, just move on. And also, there are things that would affect that. Like, let's say Mitch is awesome in in a loss. You know, that might change things, too. No, let's go one step further. Let's say they get to a conference final or a Stanley Mm. Cup final, and Mitch is great. Yes, which is so easy to see. And I know these fans are like, them winning is hard to see. You go and do something like this. No, I'm with you. If they're going to have success... Redeem yourself!
And I think he's at the age and the ability where it's going to happen for him. I do. And so at that point, yeah. Maybe. And now you're, you, you got to figure out ways to, to fit him in. For sure. And I think, I think it would be easier to justify to the fan base, say, look, this is what it looks like, what the vision looks like. Yeah. He's a huge part of yeah. this. You know, can you pay him whatever the number may be? And one of the lasting <clears throat> remarks that I had in my, in my call in today, today um, was that all of this, including Brendan, including Sheldon, like all of this could be moot, right? It, it, with success. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How much is success? I, I, I have got it. Finals. I've got it at a conference final. Okay. Like yep. that's a month of playoff hockey. Yep. The city's excited. You're thinking Stanley Cup. Game seven, second round. You can't go into. You know what, Sammy? It's it's an excellent question. Thank yeah. you. And uh, I, I I do believe there's merit into what it looks like or how close you are, mm -hmm. the fight and the dog, all of it. Which is why so, everyone acts like last year they failed, right? Because they you know they got to that second round and they just rolled right. over. And it's a different vibe if there's a fight in round. You know, you lose mm -hmm. in the second round again. There's the option of of Brendan and and Brad Tree Living saying, "Okay, we're, we're we feel like we're closer, but we're just we're, we'll make a coaching change, or we'll just we'll make a trade, or we'll just do something to kind of shake it up a little bit, and 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 make people believe that we're close here." Yeah, that's what a a game seven second round loss could do but it just cannot look like it did last year against the florida panthers it's yeah. just you can't just can't have your season fall off a cliff like it did last year in the second round one thing i think is tough to see happening is all of the things it's tough to see it being like shanahan goes and keith goes and they trade marner like as someone will if, if a new guy were to come in and be the president i think you probably take some time with some of the other decisions, whether it be Keith or whether it be with your core players. Probably that one. You probably try but, to, you know. No, no, a short round and Keith's done. No, Keith's done. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I, I can see that too if it's round one, short series type of thing. Yeah, but I think, you know, you talk about a new president, that's a huge conversation or whatever, but like it feels so oh, everyone comes in here and gets intoxicated about what the idea of what this could be with these four guys. That's what I mean. That's like if Tre one Living, guy comes in, I don't think they come like in. Tre and then came in coach and trade core. When Trilliving came in, like you've said it multiple times, that if Dubas is still here, maybe one of them is actually gone. I think that. Right? Would be and it's like Trilliving was like, wow, look you at all these guys. Holy crap, crap they're here. Yeah. The, the first thing a new guy has to do is is prove the old way sucked. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. You're right. Yeah. So there's not a snowball's chance that a new guy comes in and says, yeah, let's give it another try. That's not why you made changes. Not with the roster? That's you what Living did. He... Living literally did that. He said, well, let's add a couple different types of guys, but let's but, keep but, the core of the team but, but exactly the, the same. But, but the salary cap handicap, uh, yeah. handcuffed him. Yeah. Plus, Brendan wasn't ready to give up on his yeah. core guys either. And it now, yeah. now maybe you hire a guy with the understanding that we need you to make changes. That's the only reason yeah. why the board or Keith Pelly would make massive changes. Although I bet Shanahan would say, if they asked, if it's changes you're looking for, I'll make them. Just keep me around. <laughs> Plus, uh, of course. You know? Of course, and that's the decision that, uh, you know, Keith Pelley would make. Yeah. Wow. So high stakes for the, you know, this era of the Toronto Maple Leafs as you know them. I will say, though, it does suck as a fan where it seems like every single year has just been so got to win this or everything's done. We're all screwed. Yeah. And they're young. They're all young guys. Like Willie's young in retros in like the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Matthew's young. Marner's young. Obviously Tavares is old. They're not young anymore. They're young they're, they're, No, they're right in the, the peak of the wheelhouse here. They're, they're the not young anymore. They are, they are right at the peak. Well, they've, no, they've entered right now into the primey prime. Okay. 27, Same to, 30, difference. 27 to 30 is like, Probably when you would expect the winning, real winning window to start. I mean, statistically, it's much younger, but yes, I understand what you mean about you know man strength and an experience. Primey prime, having stuff. the experience, Playoff like winning. right here, these next three years to me. Yeah, I just wish they had had like four round wins before this, as opposed to one. Yeah. But it just, I just hate going in every year to the playoffs where there's just this enormous pressure from every other fan base. We're just like, 
yeah, well, if you don't win, your whole front office is gone and you guys suck and you lose in the first round every year. Like, it's just, but it's, that's, a, it's a huge it's, stakes, but man. It's, it's a Toronto thing, Of Sammy. course, this of is, course. This is, this is where Toronto has a million Sammies out there yes. going, this is the best or blow it up. There is no in-between in this city. Uh, there isn't. No, you're right. There's not. But I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, that's, we get to cover the New York Yankees of hockey, baby. Like, yeah. I, I want it to be high stakes. But it just, I am a fan after all. Yeah. And it just, I guess it's just existential it's, dread. It's That's also, what it comes down to. It's very hard to see a world where you trade Mitch Marner and your team is better. Yes. It's a very tough scenario. Completely to oh, agree. Listen, no, no, I disagree. What? You're, you're talking about an 11 million window opening up where you can get a $6 million defenseman and you can get a $5 million forward. Like, a good, like, there's there's some yeah. good talent out there I guess for that depends. type of money. I guess it depends. We do not agree. <laughs> what you do with that money, you know? If you go get, you, you know, whatever, pick a bad defenseman that's worth $6 million, they're out there. You, you need to be smart with that money. And so we haven't really seen Tree Living make any huge decisions And yet. as far as this window, Sammy, it's like the cap's going to go up. It's just not going to go up significantly next season either. Mm. So... You know, you've got to figure out what you what you want to do with Max Domi. you got to figure out what you're going to do with uh, uh, Bertuzzi. Yep. Like, those are those are ex- big ticket items now. I know what I would do with those two. I would sign one and say thank you for the memories, Tyler. I'd offer them both four million times three years and see who wants to stay. <sighs> um, do you want to hear what Sheldon has to say about facing Boston? Do you want to get into the Bruins and yeah, we can, a little we bit? Yeah, we can. We're, you know, tomorrow we're going to Tomorrow get, we're doing the big I mean, Boston. We went, we'll, I mean, we'll go deep into this series tomorrow. But We're 47 minutes into an hour of us talking about the Leafs, and we haven't really mentioned the, the historic rival they're playing we, in the first we round. Got tomorrow. Yeah. We, got, we, we got tomorrow to get into. Um, you know, if I can for a second go back to last night. Please. Please. Right, yeah. And just say that. You know, in my days of, of playing in the league in that, that window I had and then broadcasting for 25 years, Kucherov may be the best half-wall guy in the history of the game. Just the deception from the half-wall is otherworldly. Otherworldly. That was a perfect way to get his 100th yeah. assist because it's the one I think of most with him. It's a signature move. It is. like the tools that he has mm-hmm. – like he is Pat Kanish, that's just bigger, stronger, and yeah. just the threat that he has on that half wall, and the deception yeah. to shoot the puck, pass the puck, no look the puck. Like it's, it's incredible. It's incredible, but also. Anywhere along the wall, the play he makes to point on the one that point kind of half shoots, like a change up. It's a backhand off the wall from below the goal line. He uh, had an assist against the Leafs early in the year against Labushkin, kind of made a, a play from behind the net. Like he makes these little movements that people bite on a little bit, just enough to get a puck through. He's just an unbelievable passer, 100 assists. I freaking nature. So, Bunkus asked me on the show last night who I hate more as a Leaf fan, Kucherov or Marchand. And I was like, well, that's a great question. But it's definitely Cooch because of just... He's scary. He's way better offensively. And he's got, like... Did you see him? I don't know what part of the game it was. I think maybe midway through the second period. It had been a complete no-hitter. And he just skates in on old Geo and buries him from behind straight <laughs> into the boards. You see him walk in in an yeah. untucked two-button yeah. down-up oh, shirt. Yeah. Like, he's just... He's, he's greasy. Yeah. He's good. He's winner. Everything. Yeah. To- perfect, perfect foil for Leaf fans. Yeah. Perfect. He's a good one. Tampa Bay and Florida are going to kick the crap oh out of Oh, my God. This is, be a war. this is why you can kind of right? see a way through for the Leafs. It's going to be a war. Not serious. Listen. Florida gets injured. Boston's going to take a – if Boston's going down here, they're going to take a piece off of the Leafs, too. I mean, and the Leafs are going to have to re- give it right back to them. The, the best part is that this Leafs team has more depth than they previously have. So you hope you can survive that. You may need them all. Here comes Connor Timmons. Can he stop wearing rollerblades <laughs> on the rink? What was happening last night? I don't know. God, he goes down untouched uh, well, so often. I, I mean, he's been, like, okay for some parts of the series, series uh, of the season, but last night was, uh, oh, my God. I mean, he looked 
surprised to be in a hockey game at times. <laughs> I don't know. Is he just, does he feel the pressure to go I, create I think he offense? he has to go show. He really, really wants to show what he can do because he doesn't get in all the time and it just results in mm-hmm. blown wheels. I think Lee fans are disappointed that they would have had a better chance to buy playoff tickets in Florida than they would in Boston, eh? I don't think you want to go to a Boston Bruins playoff there, game as a Leaf fan. There's <laughs> a, there, they don't get that benefit, eh, of filling half the building up in Boston. No. They suck up all the tickets, don't they, the Good. Bruins fans? To me, that was the biggest, like, on the list of huge reasons that I would want the Leafs to play the Florida Panthers, the arena situation is near the top of the list. Maybe number one. It's just ah, so much better. This is great. Great for eyeballs. I, How fun is this going to be? Oh, it's better for neutral fans. Yeah. But, you know, watching games in that building. <laughs> but, uh, this is just pain talking. I, I can text from all oh, kinds of yeah, fans. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. What oh, is? What are they saying? Uh, same thing as you. Just yeah, like, no, It's going to be tough to enjoy this of torture. So, you know, beat the Bruins. I'll never enjoy it again. It hurts every time. Borny. But I'll watch. Like, Borny. God, guys. Move on from her. Oh, you want to my throw God. in? Uh, oh we, my God! We, we got a couple minutes. You want to throw in a Marchand uh, clip? Yeah, sure. You have it here. Yeah, let's play it. Let's All play right. it. How much of a, a list is it? Just the, the history you guys have uh, had against these guys this regular season? Yeah. Have you thrown out the window, or do you, do you think that is a, as a positive the history you guys have? Had? No, I mean it means nothing. Um, you know, like I said, they're they've changed since the deadline. Um, you know, they're they're playing really well. In playoff time, everything changes. So um, you know, it, it's a clean slate. For every team, it doesn't matter where you finish. Uh, you know how you did in the regular season; it's it's over and done with. Uh, it all begins again. Um, so it's about starting from ground ground zero again. They're a different team. Okay, I mean, I, I I get into a little bit of what you talked about the other day that they didn't push hard in the last couple of games, but I just I hate the thought of teams losing on purpose. I, I'll never believe that. I'll never believe that. No, I'm with you. If if there's a coach that that maybe doesn't take advantage of certain situations, I can buy that, yeah. Sammy. Mm-hmm. But to say that the Boston Bruins lost on purpose the last couple of games to play the <laughs> Toronto Maple Leafs, I just I, I cannot go there. <laughs> um, play the right way. After the first period on Tuesday night, they had three hockey shots, and then they're like, "Oh, this is too obvious. It's time to try again." They still lost. Yeah, they still lost. And they were peppering that tender I mean. at the end. Yeah. At the end of the game, they were. At the start, they were like... Are you with me or like... I know I'm with you. It's insane to think that, like, these guys tried to score at the end, but not at the beginning they because wanted of to perception. Play the... I mean, okay, who did they want to play in the first round? The Toronto Maple Leafs or the Tampa Bay Lightning? Both Buddy, of you answer me that question. I don't think the Leafs are a huge prize. I do. For them. <laughs> For them. That's... Not enough to throw Kipper, hockey games there, John the Tate Porter. I, yeah, answer the question. Who would they yeah. rather play? Tampa Pro- or Toronto? Probably incrementally the Leafs, but that doesn't mean you throw games. What okay. are you even talking about? It's actually de- like taking away credibility from the show, the implication yeah. that the Bruins threw you games. You didn't say it. I didn't say they threw them. I said they played their stars a little less and didn't have as much I think the coach intensi- can have an effect. It didn't have that. as much intensity and... Yeah. They're not upset with the results. No, they're not. Definitely not. All right. As you can see. Oh, my God. That's an hour. As you can see, we're just warming up to the, to the Stanley Cup playoffs, which will kick off Saturday. So tomorrow on the Leaf Edition, we'll get right into the nuts and bolts of this series. Let's do it. Can't wait. Yeah. All right. Our thanks to nobody who joined us. Because Sammy had a lot to get off his chest. To the rest of the league. Don't go away. Still got another hour as we go national. We'll welcome in David Amber. Rogers Monday Night Hockey. Hockey Night in Canada. And a friend of the show. That's right. David Amber to cover the rest of the league. When we return to Real Kipper and Born, don't go away. Welcome into the Real Kipper and Born show as we go national Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, Derek Brandale, Frank the Tank. It's always good to get Frank the Tank back in the show. It is. It is. He does great work. His luscious, flowing hair. See, I can almost see Frank, like, coming in. If you want to go golfing one day, we'll bring in Frank. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Kippy. Appreciate that. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. listen, I uh, you guys thought I called in sick that last week to go golfing, yes. so yeah. I didn't. No, to, to watch the Masters. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. That's what it was. You're right. That's what it was. <laughs> we are live on Sportsnet, Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver and Sportsnet 960 in Calgary. As always, this hour of Real Kipper and Born but brought to you by Bet365. All right, let's welcome him in. Studio host does it all for us here at Rogers Sportsnet, Monday nights, Hockey Night in Canada, you name it, David Amber. Round of applause. Clicks. Clicks, clicks, clicks. DA! DA, what's going on? Come on, guys. What's I happening? heard uh, luscious, luscious flowing hair, and I knew you were getting ready to introduce me here, so here I am. <laughs> Attaboy. What's going on? For those of you that can't see David Amber, he's on uh, monitor today. You got the fake background going for us, or is that, like, what's going on here? It's, it's our entranceway. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, just something, that, uh, and you're bundled up, too. Like what's going on? Usually you're you're showing your guns. No, no guns. I I like the free stuff. Where's my real Kipper and Born free swag? I'm, I'm hitting up the 32 uh, 32 thoughts free swag right now. So send some my way. All right, I'll work on that. Let me make that happen. I'll right, work good. on that. Um, there we go. No one, from personal experience, no one gets more excited this time of year than you. Four teams in DA and right? no wild cards. Four seeded teams here but from Canada. Watching you watch playoff hockey is the equivalent to someone going to Canada's Wonderland and riding the roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, it starts with excitement and it ends with ter <laughs> you know, I'm terrified and then I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, yeah, it, it ends if there's spikes at the bottom because it, it ends in a frustrating fashion. It has recently... Uh, for a lot of these Canadian teams, maybe we'll start by getting your perspective on the four Canadian teams heading into the postseason. Whose odds you like, how you're feeling about the situation? I, it's rare for me because, you know, they call me bipol bipolar Bobby in the uh, green room because I'm <laughs> freaking out so much. But yeah. uh, I, I think, you know, I like the, the look of the Canadian teams right now. I really do. I mean, the Jets are on a nice roll and I know momentum going into the playoffs doesn't mean that much, but... They have shown at their best this year that they're a legitimate Stanley Cup contender. They have, a, you know, obviously a very solid team top to bottom. They're built for the playoffs. They're big, they're strong, they're deep. They have a great goaltender. Uh, Vancouver might be a bit of the wild card simply because we haven't seen them in the last few years in the postseason. But I like the first round draw they have in Nashville. I like the fact they don't have to go through, let's say, Vegas to start things out. Uh, it, it's nice for them, and that's no disrespect to Nashville, but I prefer that matchup for Vancouver, a team they they handled nicely at least during the regular season. Um, I, I, you know, I really like where they're situated. Edmonton, you know, we got to wait to see who their first round matchup is. If it's the Kings, obviously, in some respects, you know, they've been there, done that, disposed of them in the first round the last two years. Some people say, you know what, it might be good for them to go through Vegas. If they're going to have to go through Vegas regardless, you might as well start there and see where it gets you. Um, you know, I, I like how the Canadian teams are positioned. I've said this, though, for two months with both you guys and with everyone else we've talked hockey with. There's eight or nine teams that are going into this Stanley Cup playoffs, seeing themselves as Stanley Cup contenders. The four Canadian teams are in that group. Uh, they can all be standing when we get through the first round, or they could all be done or through, done the, the first round and that one makes that's what makes the playoffs so exciting as you mentioned edmonton will have to wait to uh, vegas and anaheim tonight uh will mm -hmm. dictate it this time of year whether you're an oiler fan or a leaf fan prior to the results last night you know you could sit there and say okay boston for the leafs or florida uh, for edmonton fans uh, la vegas better to get it out of the way quickly with vegas go at it in the first round. Can can this be overanalyzed, David, picking your opponent, at least from a yeah, fan perspective? I, mean, I think so. We all, I mean, we saw that firsthand last year with the Leaf fans who were pretty excited to get Florida in the second round. Hey, we don't have to worry about Boston. And, and we all saw how that worked out. You know, listen, a, a few years ago, we saw, I think, in the 15th playoff series, the, the lower-seeded team won 11 of the 15 playoff series a couple of years ago. So, you know, I talked to Colorado who had to deal with Seattle. Like it, there's, there's no, you know, it's the margins are so, so tight in the salary cap era. Anything can happen. We saw Florida as an eight seed get to the Stanley cup final last year. I think it's more just how you match up. 
right? I, I do think there's an advantage in, in home ice simply because you can you can dictate some of the matchups and you have a little bit of the mojo maybe on home ice. Uh, for some teams, it clearly hasn't been an advantage for the Leafs in the last few years, and maybe it'll be better for them to start on the road. But um, I think you just got to look up and down the roster and sort of say, how do we stack up versus Team A or Team B? Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to take, you know, you have to get through four very good opponents to win a Stanley Cup. That's the bottom line. There's no easy path here. Uh, as far as the Leafs are concerned, though, I, I think this is actually a pretty good thing for them. Whether it was Florida or Boston, like, let's get at it, right? Get, you know, in Boston's case, the psychological advantage is so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just for the fan base, not as much for the players, but the fans are just like, oh, God, here we go again with Boston. But this could just be a really, uh, you know, seminal moment in, in this Leafs franchise history. If they can get past Boston in the first round, all bets are off. You have to like how they match up, despite the fact they were swept during the regular season, how they match up down the middle. And one thing I've said about the Leafs, and Nick, you know, we talk about this a lot on our Leaf regionals with you and Justin and Elliot. They're not going to get pushed around. The Leafs might lose the first round. They really, they, it's a coin flip as far as I'm concerned. But they're not going to get pushed around. They're not going to be bullied uh, as we've seen in previous playoff series at certain junctures during the the uh, during the series, and it's sort of caused a lot of angst uh, and consternation in Leaf Nation. The fact that they didn't, you know, necessarily equip themselves with a team that could handle what it takes in the in Stanley Cup playoff time. So I don't think that's going to be an issue this year. So that'll be really interesting to see. Do you think this is the last hurrah for the the core four and Shanahan and the whole thing? Is this? Do you see a world where they you know win a playoff round and all right, we're gonna run her back again for another try? <laughs> wow, we're already already into the uh, postseason uh, breakdown. <laughs> I gotta set the stakes, DA. Played a playoff game yet? Uh, listen, I think there's a lot of teams that there's a lot on the line, and Toronto's probably one of them. Where you've had this core group, and what have we been able to accomplish? You know, what are our goals and are we beating those goals? I Listen, I don't know. It really depends, right? There's a big difference, I guess, getting swept in four games, losing five, nothing every game and getting to the second round and losing in game seven in overtime, right? Like at the end of the day, you don't accomplish your goals, but they look and feel a lot different. So I, I think we're going to have to wait and see and specifically how those players perform. And, and a lot's been made, you know, Marner, uh, Nylander, uh, uh, Matthews. And if you want to include Tavares and Riley in that group, like, what are they going to do? This is what they're making the big dollars for. This is they, they do all these great things in the regular season. Will it translate to the postseason? Um, the supporting cast around them is probably a little stronger, a little deeper, um, and could provide them a little more space, which will be important for them. Uh, and now it's time to sort of step up. So let's wait and see what happens. But that's what makes it really exciting, because I'm sure there's like five or six other teams going into this same idea. We've had this nucleus group together for a while, and now is the time we're expecting to have some real results. want to get your thoughts on on Austin's chase for 70, there's no question that uh, the, the buildup was in incredible, led by, you know, broadcasters like yourself and and, <laughs> and, and Sammy McKee here. Um, but wh where are you on, on the disappointment? And if there's a, if there's a chance it could bleed into the first round or can they, can they put that completely behind them, including Austin and uh, and start from ground zero here. But uh, your initial thoughts of what transpired the last week with with the chase. Listen, as a hockey fan, I'm disappointed. I, something we haven't seen in so long, right? 1992, 93, McGill, Solani. It's been a long time. I like these milestone chases. You know, I've been touting the, the OV chase for some time now. Like, I like the idea of a guy scoring 70 goals. I like the idea of a guy getting 150 points, those sorts of milestones. Um, as Justin pointed out to me, hey, it's just the round numbers. It doesn't really mean anything. 69, 70 is one goal difference. True, but we do look at milestones for a reason. We do look at those numbers for a reason. Uh, I saw the disappointment with Matthews, with his teammates, uh, certainly with his parents. And you kind of, you feel on a human level, like, oh, that would have been so cool. And Maybe, listen, he's 20, what, six years old? This might not be the last time he's flirting with 70. So um, I think the second point you made, though, is the most salient point, and that's, okay, regular season's over. It was it was funny to watch in the last couple of days where the team was, like, uni-focused on scoring. I, I mean, Brody hadn't scored in a year and a half or whatever, scores a goal, you would have thought he was going to a funeral and just looked so <laughs> depressing for him. You know, like, it, it was funny. It, we saw something we'll probably, you know, never see again in, in that sense or in a long time, the, the level of disappointment, you know, Tavares looked, you know, crestfallen after scoring in the last minute there. So um, I think now let's see the maturity of this team. And, and a couple of times this year, Sheldon Keefe has called out the questionable maturity level of the team. 
it will it will show a great sign of maturity for when they hit the TD Garden ice on Saturday night. Uh, that's all in the past. Who cares about that? Let's get back to the real goal of the season, and that's to you know work our way through the Stanley Cup playoffs and and show something really you know growth as a team, not just winning one series, etc. Um, but let's start with Game One versus Boston. I think the team will be focused. I, I think they they know what's at hand. You know, Tampa Bay is a, a mature team. They wanted to get Kucherov 100. He got his 100 yesterday. Uh, they're ready to turn the page as they get set for the Florida Panthers. Uh, I'm sure the Edmonton Oilers, McDavid got his 100. They're ready to turn the page as well. Um, so in all the individual marketplaces, there was things to be excited about, guys. Uh, but I think, you know, again, when puck drops Saturday, everyone knows what's at stake, what it takes. And they don't have to look any further than across the ice. They see Pasternak, they see Marchand. It'll be really clear right away, like, oh, man, we better be ready because they're going to be bringing it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, before we move on from Canadian teams, and I know we want to talk, uh, ask some Utah questions at some point too, but I, I did want to get your thought on, do you think of the Canadian teams, Connor Hellebuck has a chance to be the biggest difference maker. We have Connor McDavid in Edmonton, Austin Matthews here, but a goaltender can truly steal series for a team. And does he not feel like the guy who's got the best chance to have a massive impact here? Well, Vancouver fans might say Thatcher Demko sure. should be in that. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And when you ask me right off the top, you know, how do I like the Canadian team's chances? I immediately thought, you know, yeah, Demko in Vancouver, yeah. Hellebuck in Winnipeg. You got two studs there and we've seen in the past, it, it hasn't always been the case. Listen, I know Colorado won with Darcy Kemper and, and I, I know, you know, uh, Washington won with, with Holpe and, and, you know, like they've had guys who weren't necessarily the top goaltenders. You have to get at least good goaltending. We saw that with Florida last year, their, their goalies didn't steal series as much as they allowed the team to win the series. Um, but to have a guy like Demko and we've seen bubble Demko, we can see what he does. You know, Dallas has a guy like Jake Ottinger. I've never seen a goalie perform better in a series, despite the fact they lost in overtime in game seven than Jake Ottinger versus Calgary two years ago. They should have been swept. I mean, it was unbelievable. He's facing 50 plus shots a few times in that series. Goalies make a huge difference this time of year. So, yeah, I think that's. 100% part of the reason why I do have a sense of optimism. If I'm a Canucks fan, if I'm a Jets fan, I go, yeah, we're riding with the two guys who are probably going to finish 1-2 in Vesna voting this year. I like my chances for sure. You worried about Demko being off for such a long period of time, 14 games? Well, I mean, he played. He played, what, two nights ago, and he looked Demko-esque. He wasn't overly challenged, but he looked very solid. Um, you know, someone was taking the adage that maybe some rest is a good thing. You know, maybe... Uh, we've seen even with Vasilevsky last year, we saw he was probably a little worn down. You know, the Leafs made him look very human in that first round playoff series. Now, Vasilevsky missed the first 20 games of the year getting back surgery, guys. He's starting to look pretty damn good again in net for Tampa. So maybe a little rest uh, for any of these guys is not a bad thing necessarily. You know, time will tell. Again, of the four Canadian teams, I think Vancouver's a bit the most of a wild card simply because we haven't seen this group in the playoffs together. Having said that, they've been arguably the most consistent team in the National Hockey League, right? They've led that division since December 21st. Uh, the Oilers were hard charging fast. At one point, Vegas was hard charging fast. They held everyone off. They hold on to their first division title in 11 years. So I'm I'm pretty optimistic about what Vancouver can do. And I'm pretty optimistic that uh, Thatcher Demko's back healthy and, and will be the old Demko uh, when the playoffs start for them. I think it's Sunday now. DA, the big story in the NHL today, I mean, on the eve of playoffs, is that the Board of Governors have approved the sale of the Arizona Coyotes to Utah, Ryan Smith in, in the Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, what are your thoughts on what's going on here? Some interesting details coming out, like the history of the Coyotes will not be going to Salt Lake City the way that, say, Hartford's went to Carolina or the Winnipeg Jets went to Arizona in the first place. It's an inactive franchise that they can reactivate mm -hmm. What, what's your feeling right now watching the Coyotes leave the desert after all these years? Well, if nothing else, it's probably, I, first of all, I feel bad for that fan base. You know, like we always, we mock the fan base, but you know, there is a core of hardcore fans there. And listening to guys like Louis DeBrusque who played there and seeing Shane Doan back in the building last night and seeing the fans crying at the end, you know, we can all make fun of their franchise and it's been a poverty franchise for so long. But at the end of the day, there's hockey fans there and we don't have to look any further, you know, Austin Matthews and, and other players that have come out of, you know, Matthew Nyes, et cetera. I mean, it's become, you know, pardon the pun, but a bit of a hotbed in many respects for young burgeoning hockey talent. And I think that's a pretty cool storyline to come out of the desert. 
Um, but the bigger picture is it's probably a cautionary tale for the NHL. Um, you better choose your partners well. And I think they feel really confident um, with Smith uh, in Salt Lake that he's going to be a good partner. He's young. He's progressive. He's wealthy. Uh, he's stable. Uh, he wants to bring some innovation to the NHL. And they've been burned a few times, you know, with Jerry Moyes and and. Barraway, you know, these guys filing for bankruptcy, the NHL having to take ownership of the team. Morello's had a whole number of problems and questionable, you know, conduct with his employees and with his business dealings, you know, throughout his tenure as a, as a, an owner. And it's, if nothing else, it's another cautionary tale. Like you got to be careful who you're getting, you know, hard in the expression, but getting into bed with, uh, you know, if you're the NHL and just making sure it's airtight ownership, people who can secure arenas, people who can pay for arenas if you need them, people who can live up to the promises um, that they make. So if nothing else, I think that's uh, maybe what will be sort of the historic view of the big top view of what's happened here in Arizona. But I, I would do think the NHL is going to go back there. I think there's an appetite. Uh, we've seen there can be success. You can see it, you know, in the other sports franchises that are there. It's a very wealthy community, in, in, you know, around Arizona and Scottsdale. Um, so it has the corporate dollars. It just needs a good owner, a stable owner. You can get this, you know, can help broker a deal with the city and, and find the right location and get the right arena. And then I think it'll be successful, much the way Seattle's been successful and Vegas has been successful. And a lot of these non-traditional markets are proving to be fairly successful in the NHL right now. We're talking to David Amherst, David Amber, studio host with Hockey Night in Canada, NHL on Sportsnet, as he awaits his uh, real Kipper and Bourne hoodie. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, just the thought that uh, that the that the the league, Gary Bettman, his his ownership group, would go to Salt Lake City so quickly and and not even consider anything in Canada, which would probably lend to Quebec. Is how bad of a sign is that? moving forward and you know ultimately should winnipeg be worried in the next few years david well kipper i uh, that's a good question I, I i think if you're asking that question to gary bettman as opposed to me um you know he might say well we have this great eager owner um if we had maybe someone with the same pockets uh in, in you know in quebec maybe that would be a different storyline um you know, I think they're eager. This is a different market they want to penetrate. They haven't, you know, they've sort of seen that there's the possibilities there are pretty good. I think they're really excited to have a partnership with that family as the new owners. And I don't know. I, I'm not, you know, listen, the Winnipeg storyline wasn't great off the ice this year. Um, I'm a lot more optimistic. Certainly in the next two months, we're going to see a lot of excitement uh, potentially in, in, in Winnipeg. It's a great hockey market. And um, you know, that ownership group has very deep pockets as well. I, I'm not worried about the security of the Winnipeg Jets at this point. Um, you know, you, you say how quickly they moved to Salt Lake. Some would say, my God, how long did they hang on to Arizona for? This is a move that probably could have been done, maybe not to Salt Lake, but certainly out of Arizona years ago. So I, I don't think Gary Bettman and the league has any interest in taking all that time and all those blemishes with Arizona and then, you know, abruptly moving a team from Winnipeg like that. Uh, it would take many, many years and many, many problems, uh, I would think, uh, to, to move that team. But again, this is me speculating. I have no inside knowledge of anything. How would you feel about the Utah Hockey Club going by Utah Hockey Club for the first year? Because there is some rumblings that they, that will be the name for a year while they figure out what to name the team. Utah HC, are you into it? Real Utah, how are you feeling? I, I'm not feeling it. No, <laughs> you want to name? Is that really happening? I did see that. Uh, that's out there. Yeah. I that's... thought they're not going with Utah. I thought they're going with Salt Lake something. No, it's going to be Utah. It's going to be Utah. So yeah. it's going to be Utah. Okay. I don't know. Hey, listen, as long as it's not the Jazz, and people go with well, Utah. When I think <laughs> yeah. of Utah, I do not think of Jazz. I think no. of a lot of things. <laughs> not a ton of, of lakes in Los Angeles over. either. Yeah, well, they, they, exactly. well, there you go. The Lakers came over from Minnesota and the Jazz came from New Orleans, so it all makes sense in that regard. Yeah. I don't know what they're going to do, but it shouldn't be the Utah hockey team. I get it. I get the whole FC football club and how that works, but um, no, they got to come up with something. They got a couple of months, and I hope they have a big, nice reveal the way Seattle did with the Kraken. The Kraken, I was like, oh, gosh, I'm not a big fan of that name, but it's you warm up to it, right? I wasn't a big fan of the Raptors when they came to Toronto. I was like, yeah, because oh, it's bad. You know? But then... 
grows on you. And yes. you're like, okay, I can work with this. <laughs> yeah. You know? So there it is. I, I, I don't know. Do you guys have a name? Do you have a good name for, for the Utah? You know, there's line? not a whole lot of uh, alliteration names with you, pal. You can't call them the umbrellas or the ukuleles. So I don't know. We got some work to do to figure out a name here. I got nothing, the university. To, I got nothing to go with Salt Lake City, you know, Utah, nothing. Shakers? Zero. Salt Lake Shakers? Zero. Well, the university are the Utes. U T E S. Yeah. U T I U T. I think is it the Beehive yeah. State? I've seen like the stingers and bee related That's, ones. It's Joe Pesci, yeah, right? That. Utes. Remember <laughs> that? The two Utes. Two Utes. Yeah. Two Utes. <laughs> David, uh, we know you're a voting member this time of year. Uh, anything that happened in the last week that would change your mind on voting for, say, MVP? DA and I have been arguing for a week. Yeah, this is really, it's really tough. I mean. Kucherov has an incredible resume. It's going to be an Art Ross and he, you know, lapped his teammates and, uh, you know, 100 assists, something only four other guys have done. Like the resume is, it's really nice. Um, the eye test to me would say McKinnon. Um, you know, if, if, if I had to pick one sort of seminal moment and go, oh, this is my MVP, you, you guys saw McKinnon's hat trick last week against Minnesota, right? Yeah. yeah. Going I mean, Mach 5 on every goal. There's only one other player in the league who could do that, in my opinion, and that's 97 in Edmonton. And if he outscored McDavid and, you know, basically had every metric ahead of McDavid this year, you, you, you're not, you can't vote McDavid ahead of McKinnon this year, I think. And McKinnon to the eye test is just so incredible, guys. I, it's hard to, to, to lean off of him. You know, in a way, it's made the voting a little bit easier in my eyes. If Matthew's got 70, that would have been a whole nother thing to digest. Um, that's such a huge number. And again, he'd be the ninth player ever. And I get it. 69 is still an incredible yeah. number. I'm not diminishing it. It's just, I think if it, it, it's a weird year, guys. On any, you have those four guys, McDavid, McKinnon, Kucherov, and Matthews. And then you also even have Panarin in a different year. Panarin would be getting a lot of consideration, right? Like a lot. Uh, Pasta, Hellebuck, Quinn Hughes. This is a very unique year. It's a bad year to have a, a year, career year, actually, in the <laughs> National Hockey League. Um, one thing I'll say about it is, yeah, it, the eye test to me, you got to kind of trust your gut and your eye. And to me, and I'm still sort of hemming and hawing, but my eye is saying, man, McKinnon has just been an absolute force and a beast this year. And um, this might be the year he definitely deserves to be that guy. Awesome stuff, David Amber. Thanks, don't, don't be a stranger on our show. And anytime, guys, I'm excited. You got, you've kind of put you put me on the hot seat with some of the Arizona stuff and the Canadian team. Yeah. Well, listen, we got to push you. Yeah. You've never been pushed. You're too kind. We got to yeah, make him uncomfortable. Yes. Well, Kipper, you picked Dallas to win the cup. Let me, before you boot me off the air, you're sticking with Dallas because that's the thing. I don't really know. Dallas might be the team to, to beat. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Ottinger's uh, incredible performance, uh, what, a couple years back against Calgary. If he comes anywhere near that, they're going to be very tough to beat. I think, yeah. I think as of today, I like Carolina. I think Carolina's my team. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm, Justin Williams would like that call. Listen, they addressed they addressed what they needed to address. To some, I mean, Gensel's been fantastic. They just seem a little more deep and and a little bit more ready. That was the problem. They scored six goals in the e, in the East final versus Florida as they got swept last year. Six goals. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, Bobrovsky had a lot to do with that, but I do feel they're a good deep team, and maybe we are sleeping on Carolina a little bit. So, but also, it's be exciting. Like Freddie it's Anderson hard. winning a Stanley Cup would be the perfect thing to happen to Leaf fans. So mm. that as well. <laughs> uh, yeah well we'll see guys hey listen uh hopefully i'll be back during playoffs and we can chat over some of this because um this first round is going to be epic and um you know buckle up because it's it, i think fans are on the edge of their seats already in anticipation about what could happen for their teams in a good way or in a oh, bad yeah. way what do, you, what do you mean hopefully we got you penciled in for next tuesday thursday <laughs> monday friday next two weeks that clock. you're not going anywhere other than uh on Sportsnet covering the Stanley Cup Finals. Have a great run, buddy, okay? And we're going to get you back on soon. Thanks for having me, fellas. It was fun doing the Leaf Regionals with you this year, and I look forward to talking soon. You yeah, bet. Yeah, you too, buddy. Thanks a lot. That is David Amber, studio host, Hockey Night in Canada, NHL on Sportsnet, and a great guy. The man. So, as you guys were talking, oh, boy, you were, you know, this is kind of my wheelhouse when it comes to naming teams and, you know, jerseys and that kind of stuff. No, you don't seem very good at it. 
It's my you wheelhouse. You like to do I it. I like doing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I never said it was good, but it's my wheelhouse. I yeah. like it. So the symbols of the state of Utah. Okay. The state bird is a California seagull. Oh. Seems interesting. Why they picked a seagull I, from a different state? <laughs> The uh, the state cooking pot is a Dutch oven. <laughs> the, oh boy! The state <laughs> the state emblem is a beehive. Yeah. The state flag, uh, the f- flag and seal. Don't really know what that means. The state folk dance is a square dance. Mm. The state fruit is a cherry. Uh, the state grass is Listen, Indian I- rice grass. Anything here, boys? Uh, Any I, inspiration? I, I wore the uniform of the Dixie Beehives. Did you really? I was a Dixie Beehive. That's a for hockey like team. Two weeks, yes, out of Mississauga. I uh, wore a Utah Grizzlies jersey in the East Coast Hockey League. Uh, boys, the state Is vegetable a Is a Spanish sweet onion. So <laughs> <laughs> Utah Spanish sweet onions. Hey, we're gonna need the whole year for sure. <laughs> they I need mean, a year to come up with. They the have yeah. the state historic vegetable is a sugar beet. Ooh, the sugar beets. <laughs> Utah sugar beet is not Body bad. I'm in. I'm in on sugar beets. Uh, and the state rock, boys, really exciting one. Coal. Oh, darn. Utah coal. <laughs> what about the coal miners? Utah coal miners. I didn't find anything in there. Nothing? No. Uh, well, the state motto is industry. That's the state <laughs> motto? <laughs> oh. I mean, the state song is Utah, this is the place. Utah is known <laughs> for a bunch of stuff, but I don't think I, it, Yeah, anyway. I got to ask you guys because i get the sense you know amber kind of alluded to it there you were talking about the not coming to canada we are you getting a sense that people are bent out of shape that they didn't move it to canada like is that something that you're getting the sense of because i don't feel that no, at all I, I i think in all honesty i think reality's kind of set in yeah that we've we've kind of maxed out in this country like there I'd are like no in saskatoon love saskatoon shout out yeah just but where is where's the industry? Where's the the market? Where's the corporate support mm-hmm. to buy two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar yeah. tickets? And yeah, that's, that's tough. And the salaries are going up. We, we, we're we're going to it's changing. We're going to blink corporate support. in the next four or five years. We're going to blink from a seventy five million dollar payroll to a hundred plus, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So for sure, where where's that revenue coming from? And if you can't spend to that cap, then you can't compete. Then it's kind of a cycle, yeah. a circle. So, no, to answer your question, I don't think so because I think people are starting to understand yeah. the the challenges and the ec- economics of it all. And like, their sports is getting into a dangerous area with uh, how much is, are people willing to pay? Yeah, and I think you know, I think the older me would have gotten upset about this not getting moved to Canada, but. I, you know, it's not, they didn't go back to Atlanta with this team. They didn't go to Houston or they, they went to somewhere where it's like, I don't know, maybe it could work there. Maybe and, that, that's a team like that. They've had hockey there in the past. You know, the owner seems good. Like I actually am totally fine with the Salt Lake City outcome. Yeah. And uh, Travis Yost had a good article today on why the market is very viable because it's much more than just the Salt Lake market itself with Provo and Ogden and the yeah. area. Like it's, but, it's a pretty, you know, the one thing I think that that's shown over the last, you know, I don't know, five or 10 years is that it's the strength is it. It's essentially a a regional league, Mm -hmm. right? That we don't have the markets that can drive 32 interested franchises. Like no matter how you you slice it, whether it's TNT or NBC or ABC, like it's, I want Chicago. I want New York. Mm-hmm. I want L.A. I don't want Carolina. I don't want Tampa Bay. I yeah. Tampa Bay might be in a different field, but there are markets where they just want nothing to do with it. Like TNT didn't even want to come up to Edmonton for an outdoor game. Yeah. But they were told they have to. Yeah. So it's like Salt Lake City. They those guys, I, I don't know how far off they are from contending, but they got some talent there. It's yeah. it's a it's a gift to Salt Lake City and the state of Utah that they're getting a team that has tremendous upside in the next few years. So you're saying though it's a negative for the league to be in Salt Lake City and I'm that just they don't you, want like, to. That's not you, Boston. You, you, you get 
Salt Lake City in a Stanley Cup final, I'm not sure how many people are going to want to watch. Yeah, it's much like Seattle, I feel, since they've come in. Like, they've gone, like, on my power Salt rankings Lake, of... Columbus. On my power rankings Next. of team I want to watch dead last in the league, Seattle can't be far from that. No? Like, no, it's like, I don't have any... Like, I mean, first of all, it would have helped if they, they had, had some no players, stars. Yeah. It's like they're a new franchise. I really don't have any desire, really, to yeah. watch them. Like, but you're right. Like, I, the teams I want to watch are the big market teams when they're good. Like, that's what it comes down to. Original six team, Canadian teams. Right. Which is why the league is drawn to Atlanta, where there's, I don't know, six million people or whatever. It's, you so know, they're there's big, a, big markets. A, a guy, Phoenix is included in that. Uh, Greg, I don't forget his last name. Forgive me, Greg. But uh, Houston. Uh, reporter talking about Houston and how close are they and there's no question that that's a market that that the league would love to kind of tap into Rajan Rajan yeah Rajan, Rajan, Rajan maybe yeah. Yeah. yeah so that that would whet the appetite because they would be considered a market that could tap into a very healthy portion yeah it's uh, the same size as Toronto south, Houston, of, south of the, uh, the border here yeah um, just quickly before we go to break, uh, I was just looking at some of the notable alumni from the Dixie Beehives. <laughs> oh, boy. Nick Kiprios are, listed on that list. Are, are you kidding me right now? Brendan Shanahan on that list. Uh, Dave McElwain on that list. Wow, Ra I'm in good company. Randy Cunnyworth on that list. Yes. Rick Dudley. Some good names on here, bud. What league is that? Oh, that's uh, Tier 2. That would be... Uh, Founded in 1949. What the game of the Metro Junior B? In, uh, oh, Dixie's in Ontario. Where, it, yes. Yeah, oh. No, no, I told you, Mississauga. It was based yeah, out of Western. Mississauga. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So there you go. I thought he was like yeah, you should have seen that Mississippi barn. or something. Oh, Chicken baby. wire. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? I'm sure everything that happened during those games was completely above board. No yeah. greasiness. Completely fine. Put in jail for some of the hours <laughs> that were committed in that building. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's do uh, game time on the other side of the break. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we return, Sammy with his game time, and we'll get uh, a little bit more out of uh, the Coyote news last night because we watched. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on what you saw last night and the emotion in it. And, yes, it's still the mullet arena, but the thoughts of even Arizona going back. I want to get you. All right. I want to hear from you guys. I got thoughts. That and more when we return to Real Kipper and Bourne. So the Coyotes end their season last night mm -hmm. uh, in an, an emotional game, no question about it. Uh, just your overall thoughts on... Before we do that, let's do game time. Oh, why don't you remind me before <laughs> we come back on air? <laughs> why do you let me go and then you're like, oh, we got to go because game we, time. I literally, we literally mentioned it five minutes ago. I guess that's a long time. Okay, it's game time presented by Bet365. Is it the app for latest odds? To find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365, must be 19 plus, Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Now, this is very interesting. As I'm looking at the uh, futures for the playoffs coming up, they have already posted the odds for the Conn Smythe Trophy winner mm. before we've even started the playoffs. Wow. Yes, which is very interesting. And the top three are, I find, predictable yet interesting. So well, let's guess them. Would you like to guess the top three favorites for the... Connor McDavid, number one. Correct, 10 to one. Yeah. The then next favorite. McKinnon. Correct, 12 to one. And the third favorite, maybe a little bit more surprising. Uh, Brady Anderson. Nope. No. Uh, Kale McCarr. Nope. David Pasternak, 16 mm. to 1. Then the name goes, I do want to know is Brady Anderson. Uh, if I think Carolina is going to win. I don't, I don't think they do goalies. They don't get consummates anymore? <laughs> Frederick think Anderson is really, How many have had it in the last 20 years? Uh, is it zero? I, no, no there would be Jaguar and... Uh, 20... I don't know. Years ago. That's last you won it. Two. I'm just looking at the Consmites winners by year as I pull it up quickly. Do, 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 do. Patrick Waugh in my day. And, uh, Vasilevsky was 2021. Before that, it was, I mean, Cam was Ward. Quick. Quick. In 2012. Tim Thomas, 2011. Cam Ward, 2006. There's a couple. It wasn't 2003, a ridiculous. A handful, a handful in 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right? John Sebastian Jaguar, 2003, and they lost. Which is how about, amazing. How about defensemen? How many defensemen in the last 20 years? McCarr was, 2000, was uh, 2022, two years ago. Victor Hedman, uh, Duncan Keith. Uh, where else? No doubties? No. Nope. Uh, Scott Niedermeyer, 2007. He was pretty good. Lindstrom, 2002. Stevens. Yeah, so Lindstrom. there's been... Lindstrom. Yeah. That end in there. 
Yeah, Sidney Crosby back to back. So where would, where would where that that is? Where would on your Con Smythe list be of teams that we don't necessarily think is a top favorite? Like where would Austin Matthews be? Austin on that Matthews list? is twenty two to one, boys. And I'm, I'm looking. Uh, Sergey Bobrovsky is sixteen to one, and your boy Freddie Anderson is only eighteen to one. So they're thinking on your wavelength. It's a good bet. They're thinking think on your Freddie, wavelength. You're like, I, I just Freddie, think the first thing you have to do is pick who wins the cup. Yeah. And yeah, if that's I'm pick, my point. And yeah. if I'm picking Carolina, yeah. uh, Seth Jarvis, uh, you know, like Aho. Uh, yeah, Aho. Uh-huh. You know. Wow! If they win the cup, then Freddie's gonna do something. Right. Like he's. Never done before and show up Stop in the playoffs. In the playoffs. Ah, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, fair enough. That's a good one. Okay, and uh, I'm just just as a another thing, just a little bit of an advisory here. Uh, it's the golf tournament after the Masters, which is I, I forget. Um, it's the Heritage it's called that. Yeah. No, it's the Heritage. Scotty Scheffler fired a two under today. He's six back. It's ten to one on bet three six five. With three rounds to go? Yep. You're doing it. You can make worse bets than that. All right. That would be my advice. He's very this good. Is, this is the longest labor in history, his wife, right? <laughs> <laughs> he got Well, I didn't realize. She was like three weeks or something from he, her duty. Why did he, he even got, mention no, no, that he, he could leave the this Masters? Is what, this is why I feel guilty. Because he got absolutely roped into answering this question. Did he? Okay. The media asked, like, would you leave if it right. happened? He's like, yeah, I'd leave. And then it just, like... Right, snowballed and snowballed. It wasn't and snowballed. like she was in the hospital yeah, at she the wasn't time, like at the uh, emerge. Anyways. She's in the class reading the <laughs> yeah. news. Like what? If I what now? Off brand move for him to go to that bar after. Was it? Yeah, I, I loved it. Yeah. I mean, how sick is that? You're when regularly show up with a park at a random pub. Anyways, I mean Augusta, the chairman's probably calling me. I'm like, you can't wear that jacket now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, that was game time presented by Bet Three Six Five. Visit the app for yeah, the there, to there, find it. Oh. You're, not, you're not supposed to. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, start again. Start again. We don't want to get anybody that get upset. That was game time presented by Bet Three Six Five. Visit the app for the latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary. A Bet Three Six Five must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. It's not like you can pass that jacket over to your buddies and put it on. See that? And do you think it's like the cup? I don't think it is. Like you, you, like, you can't. Yes. No. You're right. You leave it in the locker, right? Yeah. You get it for the At year. It's Champions like a trophy. It's, it's a yeah. Cup. You get it for the year. Because I do back. remember when um, Mike Weir won it, and and Sportsnet was all over him for uh, coming to the hockey game here, dropping a puck or doing interviews. So, yeah, you he brought his jacket get to home. Leave it for a while. He yeah. brought it home. I, do you think you get two? You leave one. You take one. No, you no. get one, and you get to wear it for a year, and then it goes back. Well, you get to wear it for a while, though. For the you year, you have it for the year. Oh, it's like the cup. It's, it's, it's not to, yeah, It's not Jack, whatever his name is. Buy two, get one free. <laughs> you know, blazer sales. <laughs> Buddy, there's three Stanley Cup. Uh, I just, yeah, I think. Anyways, yeah, and you can't lift this if you haven't won the cup. You can't lift it over. Your I head. know. I saw Steve Lee. Yeah, listing, that's listing bad. The other day. Yeah, I think Mess was. Prompting them a little bit, so maybe that one's well. Like, and it's but not the whole. If Messier people, says it's okay, I, I no, agree. Do it. No, what? No, I Messier. kind of agree. No, if you don't. You gotta you win pass. it. You lift it over your head if you, you want. Can you can you can take, you you take all the pictures you want. Drink out of it all you want. But to lift it over your head, yeah, it's just uh, we'll just leave it for the the champions. All right, keep it special. What were we, let's talk, what were we talking about before you were going to ask? <laughs> Sorry, I drilled the boys with golf talk. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, my bad. Arizona. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. Just your overall thoughts last night. Mm-hmm. You do feel bad for them, you know, do, but, but at the end of the day, whether or not, where do you want to lay the blame in all of this? Is Was it truly the lack of support? Was I have it, I have it more on ownership yeah, yeah, and their too. inability to build them a proper home yeah. mm-hmm. as the number one reason why they're no longer in Arizona. So because this sucks for fans from Arizona, everyone's going out of their way to be like, there are real fans there and we're sorry and whatever. There are. There's hundreds. But, like, it's it was not great. And it's not their fault that it wasn't great. It was somewhere it shouldn't be. It was in the wrong building. It was bad ownership. Lots of reasons. But there's not that many of them. Yeah. There is a pocket of 100 really great diehard fans. So I feel great for the league. This Utah thing is going to be a ton of energy. It's not going to be a market that you'll immediately be having to pay money to in revenue share, uh, sharing, I don't think. Like, I think there's going to be excitement there and season tickets and a new name, a new energy. I feel I felt bad for the NHL players who worked their whole life to get to that league and had to play in a college rink. I feel good about this. This is yeah. awesome. 
Salt Lake City is an awesome winter city. It's just this is you know, great. The whole thing was just brutal last night for me watching Shane Doan pick up a banner yeah, out of the garbage. I think it stinks for a few people. Like, it does, but I'm ta- I'm zooming out and I'm not worrying about the few people. It does stink for Shane I, Doan and Tyson Nash. Let me just Louis Debrasse. Let me just talk about by far my favorite thing about the Arizona Coyotes. Mm. Thank you for Austin Matthews. <laughs> That's you, it. And you like the uh, Kachina jerseys too, don't you? Yeah, they're fine. The, the one last thing I'll say too is this Alex Morello yeah. will be waiting. Oh, yeah. Um, like last night, this is a guy who didn't have the guts to show up last that night. Is pretty okay? gutless. Embarrassing. So, so you don't have the stones to show up. You are the guy that couldn't get it done. And find them a home, but yet you think you're going to be the owner in four years and, 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 and these fans will accept you? You really think that they have no problem with this guy coming back well, four years later well, and being question. the owner of the team when you, don't, you can't show up last night? Not paying hotel bills, apparently. Like, well, and did, really? You, did That's you, who you want yeah. Some as of your the details owner here. in the future? Some of the details make it sound like he'll certainly be the owner in the future. It sounds like, you know, he has the opportunity within five years to give back the billion dollars, reactivate the franchise, and off you go. They kept the business operations. They kept the name. They keep the team history. He negotiated to have observer status, as according to Elliot Friedman, great article, mm-hmm. um, with the Board of Governors. So he's able to follow along with what's happening with the NHL and yeah. how things are going. Why? He Well, I guess to let... So the league could say, can we get him out of yeah. here to stop embarrassing us? Sure, we'll give you this. But now they have time to figure out I wouldn't out bet how. on it. You think someone else will they'll find a way? I, I just don't think they, they want him. They, exactly. But he why still needs to they? get this plot of land in June or July. He still has it. to do it. Go get it and pitch a tent. You know what? Some other few... <laughs> <laughs> Some other future potential <laughs> owner should outbid him. Someone who wants an NHL franchise, all these people who want them, uh, someone should go outbid him. Lovely for that campfire man. stuff for you there, <laughs> yeah. buddy. I mean, it is beautiful. To, like in, buddy, it's the best. That's a nice plot of land you're talking about. Driving Just around there. Scottsdale. Oh, my okay, God. One beautiful. last thing here on but this It thing. would be a great spot to camp. Okay. It would be really <laughs> nice. Explain... Seasonally depending. Scorpions and okay. stuff. Pal. Yeah, that's okay. Explain that to me now, like, where what what gets passed on what doesn't get passed on where are the yeah. records yes. great question. like i don't i don't i don't understand so typically this. when a franchise relocates Sells. yes it takes all its history yeah so shane Doan leaves the you know timu solani's records are with the arizona coyote all his winnipeg jets records are with the arizona coyotes this happens with every relocation mm-hmm. so this so one it on. isn't Car- carolina has all hartford yes so somewhere Your, Somewhere, 17 goal season was with the Carolina so Hurricanes. Somewhere my penalty minutes are on a list somewhere in Carolina. <laughs> yes. You'd be on the list of PIMS leaders for the Carolina Hurricanes. Okay. So, so why this, isn't this team, why isn't uh, Clayton Keller's numbers being yeah. followed to Utah? Because it is like a dormant volcano in Arizona. It is just laying low. The franchise is going to hold all its records and they're going to. What re- franchise? The franchise is in Salt Lake City. There is no franchise. Well, see, this is how Salt Lake got an expansion team, but they didn't have to do a draft, a new hiring of staff, and they just said, you get all the hockey assets, but this franchise is staying here, and then it's going to re-erupt in five years. Could be the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Agreed. But then you know why I like it? I hated the idea of the Winnipeg Jets records now being in Salt Lake City. You know, like, could you keep track of the organization if it's they're just passing around the history to me, the history stays where the team was. It should have stayed with Winnipeg in the first place. They shouldn't do this, but they have done this. To me, the his- historical record should stay with where the team was. Mm. Two cents there, fellas. I don't know. I don't know. I'm Here really go confused. Stingers. <laughs> go Stingers. All right. We I was, beat I was, that I, up. I was feverishly looking for the all-time leaders in Carolina Hurricanes, Pims. Yeah. But I have failed. I have failed you guys. About most in a season. Uh, okay, let's see what we got here. Robertson. I'm looking down the list to see Tory, if I can find you. Robertson. See, this is just showing. I don't know. Let's move on. All right. Okay. In Utah, they're talking about building a 17,000 seat arena. 
Mm-hmm. That'll be a co-arena, I believe. Jazz. With the jazz? And it's the only way to go. You, new Utes, yeah. The co-arena makes some sense. But I think until that's ready, it'll be like a 14,000-seat sort of setup that doesn't have great hockey sight lines. So not awesome to start, but better than it was, to say the least. You give Marty Walsh a lot of credit for making this happen? Uh, it didn't hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, the players do not participate in any of this money. So yeah. other than making 20 guys feel better that you directly have under your 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 umbrella plus future revenue, mm. I, I think it's... I, I, I will... It didn't get- hurt. It didn't hurt him. His... his by far his most significant contribution since being uh, named uh, executive director was yeah. his stance on this. So, yeah. well, I mean, I there's two massive things that have been hobby horses for a lot of fans to just beat up is the fact that there's been no international hockey for ten years, mm-hmm. and that the Phoenix Coyotes are still in this stupid arena, and within a calendar year, he fixed it. Done. Yeah. Like immediately done. It's like what? Are, what do we whine about now? Yeah. I, I, he he did it. So it's I totally give the true. guy a ton of credit for both of those things. So tomorrow we're going to preview mm. all eight playoff series. The first hour we'll talk a lot of Leafs in Boston, but the other seven, I guess, in the second hour, really just the Canadian ones. We'll focus on those three series in the second hour. So before we leave today, I wanted to get your thoughts on Jacob Chikrin's comments. Oh yeah. Uh, asked if Ottawa is the place he wants to play the next couple of years. He says, it's a tough question. I don't know. I honestly have not thought about that. I know I have one year left in my contract. There haven't been talks of an extension, so I haven't got my head wrapped around it. Tough to sit here and act like I have. Take it day by day, whatever. That's Yeah, that's a great. much different feel than someone saying, I love it here. I want to be here. Yeah. And uh, I hope we can work something out. Think much, Ottawa- much different vibe. So... I do know that right now there seems to be a, a little bit of a race for a head coach here between Ottawa, Buffalo, now New Jersey. Why did you, in your article, you mentioned the Granado thing, that it yeah. was interesting that he got fired like three days before yeah. the end of the season. What's up with that? I just think that it could have been easily handled on the weekend, that's all, or, yeah. or early next week. Do you think maybe week. it is Buffalo wanting to get in on these coaching there is a distinct possibility that, uh, from what I'm hearing, they're going hard on uh, Craig Berube. Buffalo is. Yes. Mm. They need that. They need that so bad. God, Berube's going to be so rich. Yeah, so, every team so wants him. Yeah, he's, good, good way to he'd be in the ballpark of, uh, I think, $4 million, yeah. right there, four and a half. I don't know it's how crazy aggressive It's all the money you spend on, on players and the difference a head coach can make. Like To me, that's like, okay. Berube feels like. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. There. So Ottawa wants to get a head coach before the draft. When will be available for someone? Buddy, I don't think we'll see him. That's just my personal okay. opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, outside of that, uh, I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I think uh, Rod Brindamore will re- re-up. I don't think he's going anywhere. So Lindy Ruff. Lindy, back be, to Buffalo. Maybe oh. back to Buffalo. So... Will be interesting off the ice as uh, much as it will be on the ice starting Saturday night. So tomorrow, as JB had mentioned, we'll tee up all the series throughout the National Hockey League. What do we got, six games to go tonight? Lots of West action, all West. And we'll decide the Western Conference tonight. So outside of that, we thank David Amber for being on our show. If you get a chance, give us a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Have a great night, everybody.